Hello everybody, my name is Mujtaba Ruzbahani and I'm known as Muji and uh, I'm a former atheist and um, I was born in a Muslim family and uh, I became atheist at 25. I never called myself uh, ex-Muslim because I never knew <clears throat> what is Islam, so I left it. And when I understood and I learned about different religions, so I converted to Islam. <clears throat> and I have had uh, debates with different people and uh, with the professor uh, of Stockholm University, atheist professor of Stockholm University, with the uh, Christian Islamophobic TV channel Trinity, and uh, I always. Uh, <clears throat> had a good uh, debate with them and uh, persuade them that uh, Islam is a beautiful uh, religion. This is a much nicer version of uh, Islam. When I see you, I love your version of Islam. Although it doesn't exist, it's not reality. I I'd love to make it a reality though. I, I personally love your view of Islam and I wish Muslims would adapt to your view of Islam. But unfortunately, that's not the case. So. Last question to you, Brother Moji. Okay, first of all, I'd like to say, whatever reformation you're doing in Islam, I'm all for it. Brother Moji, you keep doing what you're doing. I love you, brother. Recently, um, it was on July uh, 19, I had a debate with uh, a secular uh, jihadists. And there are two uh, people that I had a debate with, uh, who have uh, started this uh, secular jihadist. Uh, one is uh, uh, Armin uh, Nabavi, and another one is Ali Rizvi. Armin Nabavi is uh, from Iran, and I think he's Canadian citizen and living, uh, I think, in Philippines. And. Uh, Ali uh, Rizvi, I think he's uh, uh, Pakistani origin and uh, he's living in USA. And uh, they call themselves uh, ex-Muslim, of course. I don't accept uh, such a name because uh, they never were Muslim. And I found that uh, Ali Rizvi was a uh, um, more rational person and uh, looking for answers. He doesn't know. So that's uh, understandable. <clears throat> but uh, I found Armin Nabavi absolutely ignorant. And uh, I will say why I'm telling this. He has uh, um, a site uh, which is called uh, Atheist Republic with uh, 2.3 million followers. And uh, he used this religion as a business. Uh, he sells t-shirts and he insults people's belief uh, to, uh, to sell t-shirts and make money. He looking for publicity. Why I'm doing all this? Because he humiliates everyone's uh, beliefs and uh, he tear Quran. Now we watch uh, a little bit of the debate, and later I will tell you why Armin Nabavi is one of the most ignorant people, and he has absolutely zero knowledge about everything. I slowly, slowly, I didn't convert to Islam right away. I slowly, slowly, I realized that I was wrong, and I realized that Islam is uh, not only the message of God, but is uh, the only solution to all our problems we are facing on this planet. It has uh, the solution, and uh, that's why I'm going to talk about that. But uh, for me, it doesn't matter if God exists or doesn't exist. 
uh, as Armin, uh, you have you told me that he has written a book <laughs> that not, God doesn't exist. For me, it doesn't matter. For me, it doesn't matter if uh, Jesus is son of God or he's God or he's uh, just a prophet. For me, it doesn't matter if uh, <clears throat> Ganesha is a piece of stone or wood or he's almighty God. For me, the most important is that what the message can do for us today. Do we need that? I know that uh, uh, Abrahamic religion, they have helped us in the past uh, with the rules and uh, so on. They have come and uh, helped us in the past. I say that even if uh, their uh, message is not helping us anymore, which it, it has done in the past, but if it doesn't help us today anymore, then we can dump it. But I see that we have a lot of problems on this planet. We are living in a modern jungle. Before it was a, a real jungle, now it's a modern jungle uh, with the jungle rules that um, the, power, the most powerful one get the most, the weak one get the least or nothing. So this jungle make everybody do bad things. Uh, the, the strongest one, they want to get more and more. Uh, one, le, yeah, one percent of the strongest one get. Uh, they have one hundred ten trillion dollars. Fifty percent of the total capital of the planet belong to them, and they want more. For that, they make coup d'état here. They they attack this country or that country, and uh, they have uh, you know drug cartels, weapon car cartels, and so on. They support dictators to get more. Mm -hmm. They do whatever. And that hundreds of millions of people who live on $1 a day, they also have to survive. So they also do every bad deeds to survive. So this jungle and the jungle rule is our problem. I, so, okay. Yes. No, no. So I, yeah, so I think you're talking about inequalities and, you know, opportunity inequalities, wealth inequalities, and, and a lot of that. And I agree with you on that. There's a lot of that around the world. I think we're mixing two completely separate discussions here. And that's why I think it's a source of the confusion. Yes. There's one conversation about what is true and what's not true. Mm -hmm. And there's a different conversation about what are the problems that we're facing and what are the best uh, ways to solve them, right? And I think you're jumping between these two conversations as if we're answering the same question. Um, when you, when it comes to picking your ideology, does it, regardless of what the solution is to our uh, to our problems, right? Do you care about what is true and what's not true? Do you care about your belief system matching reality before we even start thinking about what's the best way to solve the world yeah, problem? Yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Okay. Yes. Definitely. Okay, so given that you're looking, given that we are, so all, all of us here want to know what's true, what is your criteria on knowing what's true and what's not true? How do you decide? Um, because uh, I, as I said that I see the, the problems on the planet, I see that uh, we are living in a jungle. And we, uh, we jump, we just jumped to that. We, we just did that, what I just mentioned, yeah, yeah. we just jumped. Yeah. It's, that's the reality. That's the reality. You ask me, what is the reality? So this is the reality that we are living in this jungle. Okay. But but I think you're you're confusing again the two uh, to two com two different conversations that I just mentioned. You're okay. So wh whether some like there's a claim here, okay, about uh, so you you jump to another question like oh we have problems and we need to find ways to solve these problems. Okay, that's another conversation. Okay. But when it comes to the existence of God whether um, you know God spoke to Muhammad, whether the Quran is actually comes from God himself or not. These are claims, right? Okay. So that conversation, that other conversation about, oh, what's the best solution to solve the world's problem? We're not having that right now. Okay. We're, we're Right now we're focusing on how do we know these claims that Muhammad was, you know, the prophet of God, that if, that if there is a God, that if the Quran was written by God, was a, the word of God, these claims, how do you evaluate whether they're true or not? What's your criteria? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> in reality, uh, that's quite, uh, you know, difficult for any, some people who don't want to accept the, the facts. It's difficult to, to, you know, to prove. I don't have a video of God talking to Muhammad or so on. But, uh, you know, it is reasonable to think that when in 21st century, uh, 
almost no one can find the, the way out of this jungle and and uh, illiterate man 1400 years ago he could give us this solution okay that makes uh, sense that this man could have just uh, gotten this message from a higher power I will tell you one thing uh, also that I don't know if you are familiar with the uh, you know because uh, uh, when, uh, when I was 25 and became atheist later when I found out that there are uh, you know uh, two two different theories for uh, end of this world okay and I realized in um, I learned that in uh, paganism uh, there is no end, you know, there is reincarnation and you'll be uh, reincar reincarnated uh, forever, you know. And in Abrahamic religion, there is an end to this world. I was, I started to think that how come those people thousands of years ago, they knew that there is an end to this world. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the, how the world will end. There are two different theories, okay. One is the freezing, another one is the, the pulsing theory. Quran is I, sorry, I have no idea what you're talking about right now. Do you know? Yes, exactly. Do you know the the uh, the pulsing theory? What what is the pulsing theory? Have you heard about that? Pulsing theory. Okay, let me no, know. you I, have not. Have you have not heard? Pulsing yes. theory. I think uh, just going back to Armin's question, because one of the things that you said right earlier on is that you said now, that if I, I if I want to sh if I want to prove you in this way, then uh, it will become. I know, know I know where this is going. I, so here's the thing: you you're gonna see something no. scientific. So here's what's gonna yes, happen. Scientific. Right? I want to know. I want to know. But, Just one you, second. You, you're gonna find some loose scripture or something that Muhammad said or something in the Quran that vaguely resembles some new modern scientific discovery. And you're going to claim that this is something that Muhammad could have not known unless he had divine authority, a connection to a divine authority. That's basically what you're going to do, I think. Is that but, correct? Uh, listen to me, uh, Armin. You are in 21st century. You don't know what is a uh, uh, pulsing theory. But Muhammad said it 1400 years ago. He said it 1400 years ago. How could he know that? He, did not, because he did not know. It's absolute. Yeah. It's absolute rubbish for you to to. I know what you're attempting you know to do. Have you heard? The, have you read the verse? I know. I I know exactly what you're attempting to do and what no, you're attempting you, to no. do. No, no I you, haven't. I already so, told so you I haven't. You know, how do you know that he? Did because this? I have. Because because what you're attempting to do, I have experienced your at what you're attempting to do, countless number of times. Here, okay, let's so, bring it up. So let's, let's, no, no, let, so let's yeah. focus on this. Let's focus on this. Now, I told focus you, now, I told you, I told you from beginning, okay? If you don't want to believe it, okay? That's no, the, no, let's, let's try it. Let's try it. It's impossible, okay? Let's try it. So let's, let's try it. Let's leave it, okay? Let's leave no, no, it. No, let, no, let's focus right. on the pulsation theory. Oh, yeah, I, I, that's what I was going to say. Let's so, Alice say. Oh, sorry, I think your birds are in the back. Yeah, your bird yeah, is he, very loud. Not very angry. <laughs> so... Uh, let's, let's let's do this. Let's let's. Evelina. Just a second. This Evelina. This is... Okay. Let me yeah. put them. I can't believe it. We're just Can I put the bird outside? Just yes. Let's do that. And, and yeah. Go wait. ahead. Yeah. Let's so, be careful. Armin, with the and that's actually for the sake of the audience to explain because right. I know exactly what you're saying and I think that that's exactly what he's doing. So let's yeah. um, have him. Uh, explain his theory and just. I don't think it. he's the best person for explaining it. Do you want to just bring it up and just read it for us? No, and no, no. Yourself? I, let's have him hear his case and let's counter um, it. Okay, I think because for the audience, I think that'll be better because they'll get an idea of. We want to know how this kind of mindset works, this right? Is the way so that you're talking about. Pathetic, the way but okay. Hold on. Well, let's, so very, 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 I'm reading it. Here. Okay, okay. Mm hmm. So stars that it's about so stars. Explain it in his words, and then after that, you can say anything you want to. Here, Armin is reading uh, on Google about pulsing theory, and he had never heard about this. He is living in 21st century, and he had never heard about it. But Prophet Muhammad, who's born in 1400 years ago, talk about uh, pulsing theory. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Assuming an oh. expansion and contraction of a star as a yes, whole sorry. regular. Okay, so Mr. Uh, about go ahead. Teach us, teach us about the is Explain the pulsation. Yes, so we'll, we'll hear you out, and then we'll uh, Armin will respond. Go ahead. All right. 
Our okay. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, there are two different theories. Okay, one is expansion. That it says that the world would expand. Okay. First oh. of all, uh, first of all, this expansion also has. Uh, we have come to know uh, recently that the, the world is expanding after the Big yes. Bang. Yes. And uh, it will expand until uh, every uh, energy is uh, used and it will be just a freezing cold uh, universe and it will never happen again. Okay. But yeah, the policy that's... theory says that after expansion, uh, then it will come back again, the big crunch. Come yeah, back to get again and then everything come back to the uh, point which is uh, uh, started to the yeah, Big Bang I, again. I, I heard of this theory. And then again, Big Bang, and again, uh, right. uh, Big Crunch. So uh, let me uh, read for you the, the verse. Just, just to be clear, I heard of this theory before. I didn't know it was called the pulsation theory. Okay. But, yeah, yeah. It's, it's also called the oscillating theory. Then. But anyway, let's, uh, let's read the verse. Mushtaba, can you read the verse? Yes. Uh, also, let's, let's be clear that this is not a, a proven theory. This is just like... Uh, just, just, like I, just uh, there are many uh, many verses uh, about different scientific okay. facts. I just uh, tell you <clears throat> this one. I'll see. Yeah. Okay. The day when we uh, can you can you write, mention the chapter and the verse, please? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, it is Quran twenty one one hundred four. Twenty one one hundred four. Okay. Yes. The day when we will fold the heaven like the folding of a written sheet for the records as we began the first creation the first creation started from the big bang okay and we fold it back again to the same place we will repeat it we will repeat it okay that is a promise uh, binding up in us indeed we will do it okay so there are other things okay as I said, it's difficult for you might not uh, even think about it, okay? But I started to think about such things. And as I said from the beginning, it doesn't matter at all if he exists or doesn't exist, if Muhammad was a liar, okay? Let's say Muhammad was a liar, but he had the solution to every single problem we are facing on this planet, okay? And unfortunately, even a majority of Muslims on this planet, they don't know that, okay? Otherwise, we would have been in a perfect world by today. Yes, it was early for people to understand it, but today is 21st century and we are starting to understand it. Okay, and uh, that's why I'm trying to teach everybody what is the source of our problems and what is the solution. Okay, so yes, please. This very loose. Uh, uh, proximity of what this verse is describing to something that you found in science. Honestly, if you look at any 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 book and you can't and you're a, if you can't find like I could pick a cooking book and I could find loose um, um, you know connections to what the cooking book is saying to something about how the universe was created. I could find that for you. You just need a strong imagination. You see, he was looking for a cooking book that has scientific facts that we don't know. Now we will know uh, in the future, 1400 years from now. And uh, he couldn't find such a book, definitely, because it doesn't exist. And uh, who believed that a cooking book has such a verses? The day when we will fold the heaven like a folding of a written sheet, as we began the first creation, we will repeat it. That is a promise binding upon us. Indeed, we will do it. So that illiterate man, 1400 years ago, knew that there, is a, there was a beginning for the creation, for the universe. And not only the pulse and theory, that everything goes back again. What about the third scenario, where the rubber band wins out? That corresponds to a possible future in which the force of gravity brings the universe's expansion to a halt and then reverses it. Galaxies would start rushing towards each other, and as they clumped together, their gravitational pull would get even stronger. Stars, too, would hurtle together and collide. Temperatures would rise as space would get tighter and tighter. The size of the universe would plummet until everything compressed into such a small space that even atoms and subatomic particles would have to crunch together. 
The result would be an incredibly dense, hot, compact universe. A lot like the state that preceded the Big Bang, this is the Big Crunch. Could this tiny point of matter explode in another Big Bang? Could the universe expand and contract over and over again, repeating its entire history? The theory describing such a universe is known as the Big Bounce. In fact, there's no way to tell how many bounces could have already happened or how many might happen in the future. Each bounce would wipe away any record of the universe's previous history. Actually, before I read this verse of Quran, I was believing in pulsing theory because I, I uh, was thinking that if God has always existed and will always exist, so does it mean that he just decided to create the universe 14 billion years ago, he didn't do anything hundreds of or thousands of billions of years before that, he didn't do anything, and he will not do anything after the universe is destroyed and finished. He will not do create it anymore. No, it is not rational. I was believing that pulsing theory is, is the true theory. And even if you don't believe in God, you have to think that how can it be possible that this joint entity was there forever, forever, and it never exploded? The Big Bang never happened. Thousands of billions of years before. And suddenly, 14 billion years ago, it started, it started to think that, okay, let's explode. And it will never happen again. This is not uh, rational. I, I don't think that this is possible at all. So that's why I was believing in pulsing theory. Until recently, um, I saw this verse of Quran and I saw that, wow, my God, Quran says that the pulsing theory is the, the true theory that is going to happen again and again and again. It is we who have built the universe with power and verily, it is we who are steadily expanding it so he even knew the universe is expanding, the expanding theory that we know now about it. Have those who disbelieve not considered that the heavens and the earth were a joint entity and we separated them and made from water every living thing, then will they not believe? So here, Quran is talking about that the world was a joint entity before the Big Bang, and we separated them. It means the Big Bang that separated everything from, from that joint gas. This video is uh, from 1948 in the desert, and who believed that 1400 years ago, a man could talk about pulsing theory, he could talk about universe at all. He could talk about the beginning of the universe. He could talk about separation of everything from a joint entity. It is absolutely irrational to think like this, that he could ever even talk about such things. I was talking to Armin and Ali about uh, the solution to all our problems in Quran, about scientific facts of Quran, pulsing theory, expansion, and so on. But uh, I didn't know that uh, Armin, of course I said that Ali was more rational and reasonable, but I didn't know that Armin is so, so uneducated in 21st century where we have Google, we have uh, uh, 
uh, Facebook, all these uh, um, media, and he can just uh, search and he can learn about his own country, what's going on in Iran. And when I said that I'm supporting the biggest opposition group against the mullahs of Iran, as if as he has seen a ghost, and it was so unbelievable for him that I support uh, MEK, the biggest group, the biggest enemy of the mullahs. I ha I am following an organization. Okay, I don't know. They are not. Uh, <clears throat> they are not uh, famous, maybe worldwide, but uh, they are famous. Uh, by Iranians, okay? Uh, it is an organization called MEK. And the, oh my God, are you serious? You're, yes. Jesus, you're part of a terrorist cult. Now I have to explain for you a little bit before I continue uh, about MEK. MEK was built uh, 56 years ago by three top students. They came to this conclusion that they cannot um, fight against uh, the dictator Shah that was brought to power by a coup d'etat in uh, 1953. It's actually been an open secret for decades, but for the first time now, the CIA has released documents that show its role in the 1953 coup. That is the coup that toppled Iran's democratically elected prime minister, Mohammad Mossadegh had moved to nationalize oil production in Iran. Well, the U.S. was concerned at the time that that would mean a victory for the Soviets in the Cold War. So shortly after his election, the CIA began to plan his overthrow, teaming up with Britain's MI6. So they realized that they cannot fight against the dictatorship of Shah um, peacefully. So they started an organization called MK and uh, started to fight against uh, the Shah. After uh, Khomeini uh, took the power by the help of the West, uh, so MEK started to uh, fight against Khomeini because Khomeini didn't give the freedom that we were fighting for against the Shah. And he started to crack down uh, all oppositions from left to, to right, everybody. And he just left one party, which it was Hezbollah, he's calling it his own party. And uh, def uh, therefore, MEK started to fight against uh, the fascist mullahs. And MEK has always been the biggest group against this uh, fascist regime. The mullahs have killed uh, over 100,000 of MEK supporters and uh, uh, members. In 1997, a so-called reformist president came to power. His name is President Khatami, and he promised the West that he will reform the regime. President Clinton decided to put MEK in terrorist list to empower the reformists because MEK uh, is, has always been the biggest enemy of Iranian fascist terrorist regime. So <clears throat> in order to empower the reformists, so he put uh, MEK in terrorist list. In 2002, Jack Straw, UK foreign minister, persuaded European Union to put MEK in terrorist list in order to appease Iranian fascist terrorist regime. Haroz is the smiling face of a terrorist a murderous regime, so his presence here is absolutely condemned. So we want Karazi out as soon as possible, and over 1,000 Iranians here are very loudly and clearly asking for this. So Karazi should be expelled from the United Kingdom because Iran is the epicenter of terror. Jack Straw was kicked out of the parliament a few years ago for corruption cases. After this terrorist designation, MEK went to the court in Europe, UK, and <clears throat> USA, and Washington court. And all courts, they asked these governments to bring a single evidence that MEK is a terrorist organization. And these governments, they didn't have a single uh, proof. 
evidence, and they always were saying that the evidences are classified. Finally, in 2009, a court in uh, London ordered the UK government to remove MEK from the terrorist list because uh, it was absolutely based on political reason. And uh, when UK removed MEK from the terrorist list by force of uh, the court, so European Union was forced to remove MEK from the terrorist list as well. In 2012, the Washington court asked Hillary Clinton why she doesn't come uh, to the court with the evidence because the court had given uh, Hillary Clinton 180 days and she disappeared 600 days. The era of appeasement is over. Those who practice appeasement are going to find themselves shamed in world history. The time has come to stand up to these bullies and these murderers. Well, that's former mayor of New York City, of course, and the president's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, last year attending the huge Iranian opposition rally of the National Council of Resistance of Iran in France. He speaks there every year. This year, the event, called the Free Iran Global Summit, was held virtually because of coronavirus, but the message in other Tehran has stayed the same, calling for the end of the Iranian theocratic regime and crediting President Trump's maximum pressure campaign against Iran for progress. Maryam Rajavi is the group's leader. We believe regime change in Iran by the Iranian people and resistance is within reach. We expect the international community to adopt a firm policy vis-à-vis -vis the regime in Iran to recognize the right of the Iranian people to resist against the ruling tyranny and to stand with them in their struggle for freedom. Well, former Mayor Rudy Giuliani joins us now. Uh, Mr. Mayor, good to see you. Uh, you've supported good the group you, for Eric. years. <laughs> of course, you too. You've supported the group for years. Uh, you've spoken many times. What did you tell them this year about Iran? Well, you know, I told them this year that we're getting, we're getting closer and we're getting closer for reasons that almost be a surprise to people in America because the mainstream media really does the work of Iran. I think because Obama was so favorable to Iran, the mainstream media has become apologists for Iran. But the simple fact is, for the last two and a half years, there's been a protest every two days in Iran. They've killed, in the first year of it, they killed 1,500 people. Now, they, now it's harder to get statistics, but I know last week they killed 13 people in protest. Every city in Iran has had a protest. Uh, the protests almost always get violent on the part of the, uh, the, Iranian, the Iranian authorities. I mean, they shoot mm -hmm. and kill people in a protest. There's no, nothing like the issues we have here in America. And if you're MEK, that the sentence is death on sight. So we've lost, since the protest has began, we've lost about 1,200 identifiable people who either were MEK or there are some cases where they suspect some poor person of being MEK who isn't, and they slaughter him. This is a regime is that is beyond anything in the world, the regime of terror. When you say MEK, you're talking about the National Council of Resistance of Iran. They've got lots of activists out there. We've interviewed some of the protesters out on the streets. It's been a controversial group. Was once on the terrorism list of the U.S. No now, question. as you ju as you just said, Ooh, Tehran uh, calls uh, them Eric, the terrorists. <laughs> Eric, who's going to do this but a controversial group? They've lost 20,000 of their members. I mean, you don't do this unless somebody comes against you. These are extraordinarily brave people. You know them. You've met them. They're not. They're not terrorists. They haven't. They. They were taken off the terrorist list now ten years ago. That was all done with a big stupid deal with crooked Clinton, and finally got straightened out ten years later. They. If you talk to anybody in the American military, anybody, from uh, General Jack Kane, who, who spoke yesterday, who is my most respected member of the military, to anyone else, they'll tell you this group helped us more in Iraq than anybody even more than our European allies. They lost more lives for us. This is an American group. They want a free Iran. They want a non-nuclear Iran. They want an Iran that allows rights for women, which is why they have a president, interim president who's a woman, and a great woman by, by all means. And they have twice attempted to assassinate her right next to me. So I'm pretty close to her. They did that twice in uh, 2018. 
Once in Albania, those people have been arrested and convicted. And then once, you remember, two years ago, mm -hmm. we had 100,000 people in Paris. And the morning of the rally, they arrested four people, including an Iranian diplomat, coming there to blow up our rally. Many charges Iranian diplomat detained in bomb plot against MEK rally. An Iranian diplomat suspected of involvement in a bomb plot against an Iranian opposition rally in France was charged in Germany on Wednesday with activity as a foreign agent and conspiracy to commit murder. Azadullah Asadi, a Vienna-based diplomat, is suspected of contracting a couple in Belgium to attack an annual meeting of an exiled Iranian opposition group near Paris. In 2018, Iranian fascist regime sent two terrorists uh, <clears throat> to blow up our uh, summit in Paris, annual summit, with uh, hundreds of parliamentarians and senators. Even Rudy Giuliani was there, and uh, one of his uh, Iranian regime's diplomat was involved, and he's uh, and he's uh, sitting in jail in Germany, and uh, recently was his uh, first court. Imagine that a regime uh, that uh, risks so much to uh, blow up uh, a summit in Paris and kill hundreds of uh, senators and parliamentarians uh, because uh, that would be a possible uh, war against Iranian regime by USA, especially by uh, Trump administration. So why a regime should take such a great risk to fight an organization that is uh, absolutely hated by Iranian people, doesn't have any supporters. So you see how ridiculous and baseless is uh, Armin's words. Friday, January the 19th, Maryam Rajavi met and held talks with Newt Gingrich, former Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives and a presidential nominee, and Senator Robert Torricelli. Which rational person can believe that such a high-positive politicians like senators, parliamentarians, uh, will support a terrorist and hated group when they can be attacked by their enemies when they want to be re-elected? It is impossible. It is irrational. They will never do that. And who believed that Senator McCain, a very, very high positive senator of the United States and the presidential nominee, fly 10,000 kilometers from Washington to Albania to support MEK? I will be honored to serve next to the next president of the United States. Thank you, Madam, for your leadership. And we now see an Iranian government that is attempting to extend its influence and tyranny throughout the Middle East. It is a fact that Bashar Assad would not be in power today if it had not been for the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and the Iranian help and Hezbollah that came into Syria when Bashar Assad was about to fall. There's no doubt that the Iranians are attempting to stifle freedom and democracy throughout the region. There's no doubt that the people in this room have suffered. Have suffered not only themselves, but in the loss of their loved ones because of the Iranian tyranny. And I express my condolences to everyone in this room who has lost a loved one as a result of Iranian tyranny and terrorism. They've joined you in Paris time after time. And it's been a wonderful outpouring of concern and care and love for people 
who deserve better than what they had. I thank you for being an example, an example to the whole world, that those people who are willing to fight and sacrifice for freedom will achieve it. And you are an example to everyone in the world that's struggling for it. Here, several times I ask Armin, why you, an Iranian fascist regime, and Europe and USA didn't come to the courts, several courts, with a single evidence that MEK is a terrorist organization. And all ta every time I ask him, he ran away with a different explanation and his rubbish words. Christ, if you had a single, what? no, listen to me. If, if you, Jesus an Christ. Iranian, if you, an Iranian regime, and you and USA and UK had the single proof you would come to the court, not here sitting and just uh, talk empty words and say they are terrorists, okay? Why you didn't come to the court with the evidence, Mr. Armin? Can you tell me? Would you no, let no, me no. speak? Ask, tell me why you didn't come to the court. Would you let me court? speak without yes, interruption? Yes. Because yes, I, tell me. okay. Tell okay, me. Armin, go ahead. Why do you okay, think so? Okay, but I won't get interrupted, right? So I just want to let our audience know that the MEK is a, one of the most dangerous cults uh, that from Iran. It's a terrorist group. It's an extremely unpopular... No, no, just, no, just okay, hold on. No, 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 no. no, no you I don't allow to... you. Give me, give me. No, no. Give me. Okay, so no, no, no. MEK is one of the... No, you can't interrupt me. MEK uh, is one of the most dangerous uh, cults that is a, it's a cult that it was... I didn't actually know that you were an MEK. I haven't actually... We, we never had a terrorist sympathizer you, on yeah, the I mean, show. Just explain. Just explain what MEK I, okay. is and so why... So the MEK, they, they had terrorist attacks on innocent civilians in Iran from the very, from the very inception. MEK, the MEK, uh, like, they are... Um, from another group that originally worked with the mullahs against the Shah, but then because the mullahs um, turned on them, um, you know, during early years after the revolution, the MEK started doing terrorist attacks on the mullahs, but also on innocent civilians in Iran. There is countless undeniable uh, records of that. This is part of history. They bombed a whole bunch of people, libraries, um, you know, uh, places where civilians were gathering, uh, I know people that died from their terrorist attacks, right? Here again, he's going to answer the question, but again, he will continue with his rubbish words without any single evidence that why he didn't come to the court. All this rubbish you are talking about, you <laughs> didn't bring them in the court, Mr. Al uh, Armin. I could take you to the court, okay? Uh, because everything you say, if you had a single of them, the truth, I have a single. No, exactly. listen to me. No, listen to me. I'm where sorry. you were, no, where you were, Mr. Armin, when Iranian fascist regime, Europe, was... UK, USA were looking for a single. Mr. Ali, mm -hmm. Mr. Ali, please, do you believe that all these things existed? An Iranian regime, European countries, USA, they didn't have a single of these to bring to the court because the courts in Europe, USA and UK are uh, separated from the state, okay? They are independent, okay? Why these countries, they didn't bring a single of these proofs they to did. the court? They, they, they did. did. Why? Then why? I... No, no, well, let me see. Let me see, Mr. Ali. Then why the court forced I... them to remove them from terrorist lists? No, no, I don't ask you, I, 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 because, I have an answer. Because, I have an answer. Because, no, let me see. Mr. Ali, uh, Mr. Ali, he's watching. I have an answer. Let me see. He is watching a lot of... Uh, Movies from Iranian fascist regime that make no, I don't. Not against, a one. No, making okay. against against against. It's the biggest opposition, against the biggest opposition because uh, MEK is the so, biggest opposition group against the Mullah's regime. Oh, okay. okay. Can okay. I speak? Can I? No, 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 Ali. No, I have no, to no. To this. this is after, Berin, I, have Berin, to, I have to. I told you that. But okay. I have to answer. answer. Why you didn't? Berin? I have to. Answer. Armin Sorry. has. This so Armin has to, an answer, answer for you. One yeah. second. Here again, he is going to answer the question, but again, he will continue with his rubbish words. Answer. Why you didn't bring... I have to answer. Armin Sorry. has, this so Armin has to, an answer for answer. you. One second. Yeah. So first of all, uh, the MEK is one of the most hated groups by Iranian. The only things that Iranian people in Iran are more... Don't uh, lie. Are, Don't you know, lie. This, they, okay, okay, Armin, I'm gonna, go ahead. I will uh, seriously, you, gotta let not interrupt, you have to let me speak. No, no, no. I no, 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 no
we're gonna so, either no i mean it's my turn to speak okay, okay. so the mhk is, is one of the least popular groups the one of the most Don't hated die. Our, all right, I'm going to kick you out okay. if you keep Mr. interrupting me. Okay, you do. I am not lying at all. This is this okay, is do it. Okay, because all right, so I'm going to remove you from the chat group because you're not letting me speak. The MEK is is undeniably the, the most hated, the most hated group by both regime supporters and the people who are against the regime. There's only one group of people. There's only one group of people that Iranians hate more than the Islamic Republic of Iran, the government, which is the MEK. Every, like this is something that they could all hold, hold hand and agree on. Okay? The MEK because, because, of, because of, okay. who believes that this group, which is the biggest enemy of Iranian regime, the biggest organization, the only alternative to Iranian regime is the most hated group in Iran when they gather nearly 100,000 people uh, in Paris almost every year. Here's what I will tell you. If you, once you go, once you go look at the research, I could tell you this: as much as I hate Islam, the MEK ideology is by far worse than Islam could ever be. MEK is a more toxic, dangerous idea than MEK than Islam itself. Okay. MEK is the most toxic ideology for army. Why? Because majority of uh, leaders are women in MEK. Unfortunately, in 2003, USA and UK, when they uh, occupied Iraq, they bombed MEK, National Liberation Army. In order to uh, be saved from Iranian attack uh, when they occupy Iraq, but they were absolutely wrong because Iranian regime killed hundreds of the US and UK troops in Iraq by its uh, roadside bombs called IEDs. After the occupation of Iraq, uh, General David Phillips with his uh, army was sent to uh, NLA or National Liberation Army, MEK's uh, camp in Iraq called Ashraf to disarm uh, MEK. And uh, he was told and his troop that uh, MEK is a terrorist group. 
So when they came, uh, they found uh, highly educated, uh, brave men and women fighting Iranian regime, and they realized that MEK is not a terrorist group. So since that, uh, General Philip uh, is supporting MEK, and from Iraq he called his uh, daughter in USA and said, "Honey, guess what? I found your Amazonas women in Iraq." I mentioned the Human Rights Watch report and not contacting me, but I was contacted by, from other quarters. Most of it was positive, but there was some negative. On the negative side, they accused me of using my daughter's name in vain. Oh, those foolish people. They don't know my daughter. Like the women. Like the women of the MEK, my daughter's dedication and determination is a scary thought to the mullahs of Iran. As I reported, I am very proud to have written and refuted that report. So for those of you that said, I used my daughter's name in vain in that letter, why not hear it from her? Sarah, would you come up here and tell me whether I used your name in vain? Thank you, and forgive me, I'm not well versed in public speaking, so I will do my best. As my father said, my name is Sarah Phillips and I am his daughter. I'd like to tell you a little bit of history about how I came to learn about the people of Ashraf. In 2003, my understanding of the world was shattered. I learned, contrary to very popular belief, especially in America, that not all women in the Southwest Asia region remain complacent in the face of oppression. There's a special group of women who do not just let their lives be dictated for them. My father, who was in Iraq at the time, told me. He called me on his international cell phone. I was in a dorm room at the time. I remember him calling and saying, Sarah, I have found your modern day Amazons, those women warriors, the type that you are always seeking and reading about. You will never guess. He told me, you will never guess where I have found them. It was that day that I learned about these brave women. And actually, what was almost more shocking to me is the fact that it wasn't just women. There was men standing at their side in defiance of tyranny. I learned about the Mujahideen Nikauk. And I begged my father, I begged him, let me meet these women. Even better, even better, let me take their mantle and let me fight with them. They'd managed to not only break stereotypes and roles, but they'd overcome insurmountable odds to rise up to a position of authority and power. These women and, me these women and men of the MEK believe in democracy and equal rights. They believe in freedom. What a beautiful word, freedom. The Webster's Dictionary defines freedom as the quality or state of being free, the absence of necessity, coercion, or constraint in choice or action, liberation from restraint from the power of another. Soon after I learned of the people of Camp Ashraf, I began corresponding with several of them. If you're listening today, and I sincerely hope that the women of Ashraf are able to hear my words, I loved receiving your electronic letters, and I loved being able to share that information with people on my campus and with friends, letting them know what is going on in Ashraf and around the world. There are not many people in the world as valiant as these women of the MEK, who I had the absolute honor of being able to correspond with. We would talk in our emails and in our letters of one day meeting in a free, not only Ashraf, but Tehran as global sisters and finally being able to cross those borders. My father.
My father has given many speeches lately defending his stance that the MEK should be taken off the terrorist list. Many of you believe him and you know this to be true as well. But for those of you that might question this, that might question the stance of my father and even his character using his daughter as a tool, I want to tell you something. When my father first took over in Iraq, and this is a true story, he would warn me, Sarah, do not be so starry-eyed. Do not be so excited by these stories I tell you because they might still be falsehoods. These are terrorists we're talking about. He was as skeptical as any American would be concerning the disposition of the MEK and the perception that they were terrorists. But when I told you about my character and standing up here today, the, the apple does not fall far from the tree. My character is like my father's and he walks with open eyes and with an open heart. When he began to realize that the people of Camp Ashraf were not terrorists, he began to activate, or he began to advocate for them and urge me to pass along what information I could. By the time he left Iraq, my father knew without question that what he had originally been instructed about the people of Ashraf was a blatant falsehood and propaganda to empower corruption and ruthless men. I always felt that there was not enough I could do just a simple young girl in America. What can I do knowing about this situation? I always felt that far away my voice would be very small, that my words could not be heard. I'm very lucky to be here today in front of you all and finally let my voice be heard. This army is so ignorant that he even doesn't understand that we are proud of our 2,500 years of history. And Iran is the most educated nation in the Middle East. Yet, the fascist regime of Iran is the ISIS barbarian regime that chop hands, hang people on the street, stone women to death. And the opposition, according to Armin, the opposition, the most, the biggest opposition of this uh, regime, the only alternative to this regime is far more worse than the regime itself. So how can you say that your country is highly educated, your nation is highly educated, and your country has such a proud history when it doesn't have a better alternative to this, such a fascist ISIS regime. Shame on you, Armin, you are so uneducated. Uh, an organi organization that has never ever chopped anybody's hands, has never ever hanged anybody, has never ever executed anybody is far more worse than the regime, an organization that is led by women when the regime has not even a single woman in leadership or in the government. And you say that MEK is worse than, far more worse than the regime. Here's, here's what I'm saying, okay? The, the European Union, Canada, the United States, all of them have marked MEK as a terrorist organization, okay? The only reason, the only reason why they decided to lift it is because they they see Iran as a threat, okay, and they wanted to support a group that is they, they thought that is the most uh, financially that has the most resources against the Islamic Republic. And the only reason why they had the most the most resources against the Islamic Republic is because of the money that they got, the resources that they got from uh, Iraq and then Saudi Arabia. This ignorant several times tried to explain that why MEK was removed from the terrorist list and he ignored the, the orders from uh, all those courts, which I was saying. And he was uh, saying that uh, MEK is the most financed, but again, he realized that finance is not alone enough to bring down a regime. So he was saying that the most resources. And uh, what is these resources? Uh, resources is uh, cars or the resources are buildings. No, resources are people who fight, people who are ready to bring down the regime, the uh, vast support, and the organization is highly, highly uh, organized. But now, in recent years, they realize that they have wasted their backing on an organization that has zero backing in Iran. And a lot of Iranians identify the people as supporting the MEK as people that, who are betraying the people of Iran. And that's why in recent years, a lot of the U.S. politicians and Europeans who were trying to use MEK against Iran are realizing how, what a big of a mistake that they have made. And they're actually washing their hands clean okay. of this vile terrorist group. These are the resources he meant.
Here I repeat again what he was saying about that the politicians are in recent years washing their hands off MEK because they realize that MEK doesn't have any support. But now in recent years they realize that they have wasted their backing on an organization that has zero backing in Iran and a lot of Iranians identify the people as supporting the MEK as people that who are betraying the people of Iran and that's why in recent years a lot of the US politicians and Europeans who were trying to use MEK against Iran are realizing how, what a big of a mistake that they have made and they're actually washing their hands clean okay. of this vile terrorist group. This summit was just a few days ago and uh, not only uh, all politicians that have been supporting the MEK were supporting, but new senators, new politicians, like Ted Cruz, uh, a presidential nominee who had never, never uh, supported MEK, he also started to support MEK, and more and more are coming to support MEK because they realize that the only way out of this Iranian fascist regime is MEK. Grand and magnificent summit of Iranians, international supporters, political dignitaries, bipartisan lawmakers from five continents. The largest virtual gathering since coronavirus from thousands of locations worldwide, paying homage to nearly 70,000 COVID-19 unsung victims in Iran. The mullahs at their most vulnerable and weakest point resort to more terrorism against Iranian dissidents, the West, call on the world community on the imperative to adopt more resolute policy. In the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, tens of thousands of Iranians, supporters of National Council of Resistance of Iran, NCRI, will attend the largest ever virtual gatherings, Free Iran Global Summit, on Friday, July 17, 2020. Hundreds of distinguished international political dignitaries and bipartisan lawmakers will be joining them. Partial list of speakers. Rudy Giuliani, former New York mayor. Joseph Lieberman, former U.S. Senator. Michelle Elio Marie, former French MFA, MD, MI. Giulio Terzi, former Italian MFA. John Baird, former Canadian MFA. Michael Mukasey, former U.S. Attorney General. Rama Yad, former French Minister for Human Rights. Linda Chavez, former U.S. NSC member, Ingrid Bentoncourt, former Colombian Senator, members of the United States Senate, the U.S. House of Representatives, a cross-party delegation of the British Parliament, members of the European Parliament from different political groups, members of the German Federal Parliament, members of the French National Assembly, and members of the Italian Parliament would also participate. Friday, July 17th, 2020. And if you would like to see how many uh, politicians are, have been supporting MEK just a few days ago, uh, 17th of September 2020, just go to uh, YouTube and search Summit to Support a Free Iran Global 2020. And you will see a list of uh, so many uh, high positive politicians that uh, are there and you can yourself see how many great support MEK has. Therefore, arming is an absolute uneducated person that you are wasting time to follow him. 2.3 million people following a businessman who is selling shirts and trying to get uh, attention, publicity by tearing Quran, putting uh, Hindu's God as a sexy God and so on. He just looking for selling t-shirts and making money uh, on religion and he has absolutely no knowledge of anything when he doesn't know what's happening on his, in his own country. So how he knows about the universe, about problems of this planet, that how we are going to solve all these problems. So don't waste, waste your time on Armin and uh, his uh, atheist republic. Thank you for watching this video and I appreciate it very much.